This is an ICO signal tracer. Um, it's a piece of tube equipment and as such a lot of the voltages inside of it and even the voltages coming out on the probes you can see here 146 volts DC are dangerous voltage and very hazardous. So if you're following along at home you're doing so at your own risk. So this is an ICO 147A signal tracer and it's uh, just like every other ICO 147A signal tracer you've probably ever seen on the internet with one exception. This uh, signal tracer has been modified to accept the Carlson uh, super probe so that uh, you can trace signals with it without hooking up to the circuit. This probe is more of a sensor than it is a probe. Um, and all you have to do is point it at the circuit and it, uh, it uh, will uh, give an audio output. To do that, this thing has to have a 5 volt power supply added. And that 5 volt power supply is adjustable uh, with this gain knob. You can add more voltage or less voltage and what that does is it increases the already high gain of the uh, of the probe itself. There's a circuit inside of here that has several BJT transistors that are running at extremely high gain. And uh, so that probe works very good for sniffing out circuits. Uh, there have been a couple of other modifications done to this. I got this uh, ICO at a uh, estate sale and uh, there was a pilot light that was added over here. I uh, moved this pilot light over to here, put in the gain control, put in a TRS female jack here. And then also there's another jack here that's for the noise function. And the noise function has a switch here, toggle switch that you put over when you put this in the noise position. When you do that, this jack right here will provide 144 volts DC to the component under test and it will monitor the audio back from that component to see if it's noisy or not. So if we take a look underneath it here, there's a couple of, uh, couple of things that have been done to this uh, signal tracer. Uh, one of them is I've replaced the filter capacitors in the uh, power supply because the original filter capacitor was old and worn. The other thing I've done here is I've added a capacitor into the first stage of amplification because if you don't do that, whenever you turn this potentiometer down, it drags the grid of this tube to ground. I've also added a resistor so that electrons won't build up on that grid and send this tube in to cut off. Um, down here, there is a 5 volt power supply that's been installed in this Oral B dental floss container and it's been uh, super glued to the chassis and that uh, 5 volt power supply supplies two things. One thing is it supplies the LED and the pilot light and the other thing is it supplies the voltage that this potentiometer right here is varying to the uh, Carlson super probe. So that's uh, the extent of the modifications to this and it's an extremely valuable piece of test equipment for me because it uh, it will sniff circuits and it will just immediately tell you where the problem is or where the problem isn't. And uh, I, I have an example here that uh, we can take a look at and uh, we take a look at this example right here where I have a small transistor radio that has just a, a very low voltages in it and I can very quickly determine whether that uh, transistor radio which parts of it are working and which parts are not just by listening to this uh, this probe. So uh, one of the other things about this uh, ICO is that it uh, 
it requires you should ground the chassis of this these have a tendency to have leaky ac transformers and you can get shocked on this and in fact this uh this ico came with a uh isolation transformer attached to it so the guy who had it previous to me obviously had encountered something similar to that so um that's just one of those learning i'm sure for him was a learning experience unfortunately and uh so here i'm gonna i'm gonna take a look inside of this uh this i have to turn off the light because this probe is so sensitive that if I turn on my light overhead, you can see that the light on the probe is already going off. It's just picking up everything from that fluorescent light. So I'm going to turn that light off and... So here I am on the detector stage of this radio. And tune it in. Bring back uh, some of that energy that uh, put a little pause. I, I remember we, uh, in the early stages of the Trump campaign, so we were sort of fascinated by that energy. By listening to that, I already know now that everything up to the detector of this radio is working. So, and we have a terrific response from people all over the country who have written songs about the truck. By just putting that probe on there, I have eliminated four stages of amplification as being the problem with the radio. People really went for it. That, that doesn't appear to be there that much right now. Now, another thing that, and, you know, as we go around and kind of talk to that you can do country, is you can take a look at the oscillator in here. This. And when you look at the oscillator, you'll notice that the probe lights up bright green. Hopefully you can see that. You may not be able to. Let me make sure that you can see that. So the probe is lighting up bright green and it gets very quiet. That lets you know that the oscillator is functioning. So that's how valuable this, this tool is. I didn't hook anything up to this radio. I just point the probe at it. And, and it tells me uh, where the issues are. And this works even better with tube radios. So uh, just a fantastic tool. One of the issues I do have on my bench is that I've got a, a cable modem on my bench, which is no good place for a cable modem. And you can hear the, you can hear this probe actually picking up the cable modem. And if I get any closer to it, There you can hear what the cable modem sounds like. So uh, this probe is extremely sensitive. Another example of uh, this probe. Well, why don't we listen to the digital display on my flute multimeter? So, there you can hear the digital display on that multimeter. Notice if I turn it off. So, it's, it's a very sensitive probe. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted it... Uh, on here but I also wanted the noise function to work on this because being able to attach a component to that noise uh, that noise uh, measurer and uh, being able to test components for noise is really important and it's one of the best functions of this thing here's the issue because it puts the 144 volts on the audio line um, you would ruin the Carlson Super Probe if you did that, if you put the uh, 144 volts to that probe. So 
there's a little bit of work that needs to be done to make sure that you keep that functionality. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to a little presentation on exactly how the circuit has to be modified to add this probe in and also to keep the functionality of the uh, noise uh, the the noise measuring system on this thing and then uh, maybe we'll come back and uh, listen to the noise uh, measuring uh, function so boy you know this thing is dead quiet until you turn up the gain on the probe and then it's as sensitive as sensitive gets so you can hear it there it's at full volume with the gain on the probe turned down and then you can turn up the gain on the probe to where you're picking things up. This probe also has a noise uh, noise switch on it, so it will also detect noise in a circuit. But for looking at the noise in components, it's nice to have that 144 volts, and we want to be able to get that out without destroying the probe. So here's a example of the noise uh, measuring uh, the noise uh, switch on this Carlson Super Probe. That's the noise that's coming out of that uh, cable modem. So it's an extremely sensitive uh, device and very handy. Uh, works extremely well. So we'll go take a look at what it takes to do this modification and uh, in a presentation form. So this is a picture of the original ICO 147A signal tracer. Uh, it's worth noting here that it has an audio input. It has an RF input. You'll notice that the function knob down below it uh, will give you RF, audio, or noise. When it's placed in the noise position, it uh, you put these two cables on your component that you think is noisy, and it will apply 144 volts to it. So this signal tracer is worth being careful of. Even if you plug something into the B+, you're going to get a lot of voltage out of that. So uh, this is a dangerous piece of equipment. Uh, but it's quite useful. So uh, if you're messing with this piece of equipment, you're uh, just like with any piece of tube equipment, you're proceeding at your own risk. This is the original schematic for the ICO 147A. Right now, S1 is shown in the RF position. If you feed an RF signal in, it gets amplified by V1A, and then it goes into the second stage, V1B. So uh, if you slide the switch one over to the right, it goes to the audio position. It takes input from J1 and feeds it into the second stage. If you slide it into the third position, what you get is you get 144 volts off of right here, fed into pin four, being applied to pin three, which is J1, and then also it is monitoring the audio from that through this second stage. This is uh, the ICO 147A that I bought at an estate sale before any modifications were done to it, except for the modifications that the uh, owner before me did. And uh, one of the modifications he did was he put a pilot lamp up here, and he also, because this switch was dirty, the one that turns your AC on, he put his own AC switch in, which was unnecessary. Uh, just clean up the switch down here and it'll work fine for uh, turning on your AC voltage. So uh, I used uh, what he did here though, because uh, he made some holes and I, I made use of the holes. This is the Carlson Super Probe. That's a schematic of it, straight from Mr. Carlson's lab. And uh, you can see the sensor over here, and then several stages of high gain amplification. And all of that, uh, there's a switch here to go between noise 
and normal audio monitoring. And I have that whole probe built up, put in a copper pipe, and the uh, tip ring shield connector over here has a ground on the uh, uh, shield, and it has five volts applied to the ring, and the tip carries the audio signal out. So that uh, five volt supply is made variable because as you vary the five volt supply on this line, you vary the gain of the probe. There's a picture of the probe that I built. Uh, you'll notice that it has a TRS connector on the end of it. And uh, other than that, it was all built through hole. It isn't built uh, with uh, uh, the smaller components, but uh, that's uh, it just worked for me, and that's how I did it on a prototype type of board. And that's all sitting inside of this uh, copper pipe. Here's a picture of the 5 volt power supply that I put inside of my ICO. You'll notice it's quite small. It fits on your uh, fingers. It has a 110 volt, uh, 120 volt input here and a 5 volt output up here. And here's a picture of the wires attached to that power supply and the power supply being put in an Oral-B dental floss container. Now here's the noise detection function problem. That's what I call it. So here's the issue. When this switch is in noise detection mode, 144 volts DC comes down here and it gets fed back to J1. But we're using J1 for our Carlson Super Probe. And we don't want to feed 144 volts into that Super Probe. So uh, there needs to be a solution so that you can still use the noise function and not ruin your Carlson Super Probe. And this is the solution for that issue. What you do is you take a double pull, double throw switch and you break that 144 volt DC line and then run the output of that switch to pin four of the rotary switch, that which is the noise position. And then you take the input from the Carlson Super Probe, it runs to pin three, and down here you take the other side of that, run it to your high voltage noise probe. That way, when the switch is in this position, it is monitoring the Carlson Super Probe and making sure that the 144 volts DC does not get into the probe. And when you flip the switch the other way, it disconnects the Carlson Super Probe and it connects to the high voltage probe and connects to the 140 volts DC. So here you see all of the modifications that were made to the uh, signal tracer. Uh, first of all, all of the power supply capacitors were changed out. Uh, second of all, this stage of amplification was modified. And it was modified to add a capacitor in between this variable resistor and the grid of this tube. And the reason for that is, if you don't do that, what happens is every time that you turn this control down and it goes to ground, you run this tube into saturation. And that is an undesirable thing to do. It's part of their design, but it's still undesirable. Also, because that capacitor was added in, if you're not careful, what can happen is you can get a charge build up on your grid and it will cut the tube off. So there's been a two mega ohm resistor added in here to bleed off the charge from the grid. Now over to the power supply. The power supply was wired off of the AC line and oh by the way once again this uh, signal tracer has the chassis on it grounded on a three pin plug and the reason for that is because 
these transformers have a little bit of leakage and you'll get shocked on, on it if you aren't careful. So these two lines come off the AC. They go to the power supply ACN. 5 volts DC comes out. Now the pilot light has an LED that's run off of that 5 volts. And it's got a 100 ohm resistor for current limiting. Then there's a 20K linear potentiometer that feeds the voltage into the TRS female jack. And that, of course, is the power supply for the Carlson Super Probe. And the more voltage you feed, the higher the gain is. And so uh, that's how, how that's done. Now, the 144 volts for the noise function comes off of here. That line's been broken. That used to come off of here and go straight to pin 4 of the rotary switch. Now it goes to a double pull, double throw switch. Right now this switch is shown in the Carlson Super Probe position. And you'll notice that there is no way to apply that 144 volts right here to pin 4 as long as that switch is on the Super Probe. So there's no way to ruin your probe. That, that's what happens here. Now if you flip that switch into the noise position what happens is it applies that 144 volts here and right here goes out to the high voltage noise probe. So problem solved. You'll never wipe out your Carlson super probe and you still have the functionality of the, uh, of the noise uh, component noise tester on this signal tracer. So that's uh, pretty much so the long and the short of it, how to modify a ICO 147A to take a Carlson Super Probe, and it's just a troubleshooting monster. Uh, works extremely well. Now I don't have any noisy components because I always throw them away, but this is to give you an example of what a noisy component would sound like. So you'll notice that uh, for this demonstration, this is set to noise and the toggle switch is set over. And the reason for that is so that we won't fry the Carlson Super Probe. Now to go back to the other, to go back to the Super Probe, all we have to do is click that switch over to the left and put this back to audio. And we're all set up for the Carlson Probe. and. Uh, the Carlson probe is functioning. You can hear it listening to my modem, and uh, so that's how this—that's uh, how that double pull, double throw switch works.